Uh, hello and welcome to how to draw basic or a basic Celtic knot. Um, thank you for the inspiration, children of Sarah Jane Holdaway. I've been meaning to do this one for a while, and you guys have just inspired me. So this is for you. So you are going to need a pencil. Um, for your pencil, it's quite good to have a harder pencil. So pencils range from sort of all the way up to from 9B, which is really, really soft, and HB in the middle, which is your normal pencil, all the way up to sort of 9 inches upwards. Um, I usually use a 6H, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to use a 4H. The reason that we use a harder pencil is it leaves less graphite on the piece of paper or card, whatever you're using, and um, therefore it's easier to rub out because with the Celtic knots, we do it first in pencil and then we go over it in ink. So grab yourself a pencil. If you don't have a 4H or something like that, just use an HB. It's fine. It will rub out. Just be very light when you're doing your strokes. Don't carve it in there like a maniac. So a pencil. A uh, rubber, um, I can't remember what this rubber was, I think I got it from the pound shop or Smith's or something, but there's not much of it left. Um, there's these ones that you can get, I can't remember who makes them, let's find out. Scissors. That's where he cuts his finger off. Uh, these are the, the Helix Oxford rubbers are really really good um, so yeah get one of those if you don't have a good rubber uh, you're gonna need a fine liner of some sort uh, I like to use the Stedler pigment liners this is a 0 0.5 which means that this nib here is half a millimeter yeah half a millimeter thick um, you can use any width you want, it's just how thick the black lines will be. And something nice and bright and colourful for your background. Or you can use black, it's traditional to use black, but we're going to use a nice bright red today in a marker pen. So, Celtic nuts, all the way I learnt them, which was off of YouTube, are done with a grid system. Now, I do freehand to draw my grids. So I'm going to stick with that. You can use a ruler if you want. But for this, we are going to do a three by three grid, which means that we shall show you. We are going to do a grid that is, or contains three squares along the top, three squares along the side, nine squares in total. So like I say, I like to freehand them out and use my eye when you're freehanding to judge the distances. I'm not looking at the end of the pencil when I draw the line, I'm looking at the distance between the line I'm drawing and the one I've just drawn. And with a bit of practice, it's not that hard to do. Always stroke your lines out rather than try and draw them in one go because otherwise it'll get wobbly like that. Much better. So just stroke them out little by little, and then you've got control. And now we're going to do some lines down, working out roughly where a square is, which is about there, and about there, and about there. So there we have a three by three grid. So now the next thing you're going to want to do is to put circles on these junction points here and here, 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 here. I think you're getting the idea by now. Here, here. And then the last two here. 
I don't bother with the corners because we don't need them. Next step is to put a circle of the same size as these ones in the middle of each box. Try and get it roughly in the middle. Again, practice makes perfect. You can do all of this with rulers and stuff if you want to. But where's the fun in that, hey? So, step number two, complete. We've drawn a grid and we've added in our dots. Now if you have a look, in each row there's diamonds. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So there's two diamonds in that row. In this row, one, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Three diamonds in that row. Two in the next one. Three in the next one. Two in the one below that. And what we're going to do is put in our parallel pairs. Now parallel pairs are a pair of parallel lines. And we're going to draw them on the inside of the circles in the diamond. So that's your first diamond with your first set of parallel pairs. Next one is going to come here. So there we have our first two parallel pairs. Now we're going to drop down a row. So we've got one, two, three diamonds, except this time the parallel pairs are going to go the opposite direction. So you're going to go there. there and here. It can be really useful to turn your paper when you're doing these. So the next row has got two sets of diamonds, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And remember the parallel pairs change direction, so they're going to match these ones up here. On the inside of the circles, That's that row done. Next row, we've got three, one, two, three diamonds. So it's going to be three sets of parallel pairs on the inside of the circles. One, two, and three. And then our last set of diamonds are down here. One, two, and again, parallel pairs changing direction. There we have it. Parallel pairs are done. All of the diamonds have been filled. So what we've got here is the weave of our knot. Now all we've got to do is put the corners on. So we'll start at this corner here. So this line here is the outside edge of this and it's going to come to here. So it's going to be a nice corner coming around to there. And the next one is going to come from here to here. It's going to come up and back down. And then the next one is going to come from here and go to here. So we'll draw him in. Like so. Turn that round. The next one is going to come from here and go to here. It's the same as this one. And come up. And over like that. And again, this is the same as this one, so it's going to come from here to here. Around like that. And this one from here to here. And come around like that. Same again on the corner from here to here. Around like that. And then from here to here. So come around like that. And there you have it. You've just drawn your very first Celtic knot. So, next, we're going to put down the pencil and pick up the fine liner. And we're going to ink in our ribbons. Now, this knot is actually made of three different ribbons. So I'll ink them one at a time so you can see which one's which. I'll start up here in this corner. Now when you're inking, try and work with the natural radius of your wrist because you want 
going to try and get these nice and neat and smooth because you can't take them back. That's the inside on it. Let me come up here. And, uh, I see my wrist is running out, so I can turn the paper. I can work it back the other way. Now when you're drawing lines with ink, look at where you're going. So you can get them to match up. So that's one bit. Now the ribbon comes here, it comes underneath this ribbon. So we're going to match this line and that line up as best we can. And there. So there. And it's coming underneath this one again. So that's going to there. And around. And then this one comes here. Once again, my wrist running out. I'm going to be cheeky and do it in one. And now the last bit of this ribbon. So it's coming from here to there. And from here to there. Now it's really important that you get these lines matched up with each other. Because if you don't, then you end up with this. So you have a ribbon coming in like that. You'll be going underneath this one. And if you're not paying attention and draw your lines badly, it'll end up looking like that, which is rubbish. What we're looking for is the nice matching up. So now we'll ink this ribbon here. So it comes again up around the outside. Nice and slow and steady. One. them up again as we go, so that one comes there, that one comes there, so down and around, down it, and around, and then the last one is here, so that one's coming from there to there, and then from there to there. That's two ribbons inked, which just leaves us the third ribbon here, which goes around the outside. There's one bit. And the next one. there because I don't want my wrist to do that and that one line it up like that and turn it around so I can do this one nicely I'm gonna come around and meet up with him over there and we've got these ones so that one I'll get them coming stop as well because I was running out of wrist there and I'm back down. So we've got the outline of our knot. Now we can put a nice border on it. So it's just a straight line here and here to box it into a little frame. Again here you can use the lines that you drew for your grid as the edges. Here, 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 here. Yeah, let's put some little corners on it as well. Well, actually, no, we'll leave the corners off. So there we go. Done the inking. Now, one of the important parts is making sure that that ink is dry before you rub it out. So we'll give it a blow, or a wave around like this. Get that really funky sound. And let's rub out our pencil. Don't go too hard with your rubber, just nice and light. Otherwise, you're going to smudge whatever's there. 
probably making the camera shake a little bit. If it is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There you go, rubbing out. Get rid of as much as a pencil. This is why, as I said, we use the harder pencil. Now, you can see that where we've been lining things up, there are some gaps. So you can fill those in. Now the best way to do that is start from inside your line. Just bring it down. Down. Up. Down. 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 And down. So there we have the outline of the knot. Next we'll pop in our little background. It's a nice bright red, like I said, because we like that. It would not stand out. Be careful when you're doing this bit because you don't want to get any on your knot. When you're colouring in, start with your edges and then do the middles. Like so. And that way you won't accidentally go over the lines and onto your knot that you just spent so long drawing. Like so. And Sometimes colouring in your background can be the longest part of doing a knot. But the reason that I really love them is because they are just with that grid system and a few simple rules. And from that, they kind of build themselves. And with a steady hand, patience and practice, I really believe that anybody can do Celtic knot work, which is quite rare in the art world. So there we go, background done. Now the final part is shading. And this is what makes you knot pop. So here for example, this knot, this ribbon is going underneath this ribbon. So it would have a bit of dark in here which would fade out. And the same on the other side. Now I do it in ink, uh, you can do it in pencil, you can do it in colour, you can do it in whatever you want, but I'll stick with the way I do it for now. So just carefully, again making sure you don't go into your background, spreading the lines out, you can always add, you can't take away. There's a bit of shade there. And shade there. Go up a little bit, give it a bit of texture, and then there'll be some more over here because this one's coming out underneath. Like so. And then again here. Now here on these ones where it loops around, I like to do it so that it goes with the loop, like that, and just make your lines get a bit shorter as they go up, like so, and then there's another one over here. If 
hopefully I've got my camera angles right and you can see this. Uh, there's an extra bit of shading you could do here, which is this edge where it pops back over. Just like that. And I'll do this one. So it's on a corner. So just shortening the lines out. And again here. And remember this is just the way that I do it. Art is very subjective. So play around, express yourself. Like I say, if you want to do your shading in a different colour, do that. If you want to colour in these ribbons, do that. Do whatever the heck you like. Just have fun with it. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And one day you can spend all day drawing greeting cards that people occasionally buy. And it makes you feel fantastic. Or you can end up in an art exhibition and be absolutely terrified. Shading there. And some more shading over here. So as you can see, every ribbon will have shading on it. You don't have to have the shading. Traditionally, in Celtic lot work, they don't really have shading. This is more of a Ben adaptation. They do have some shading, but it's nowhere near as sort of pronounced or modern as this. A friend of mine described my style as traditional Celtic knotwork with a touch of early 90s New York hip hop graffiti. I thought it was amazing. So just over there to shade, a bit more there and a bit more there and we will be done. And again another corner one, so just shortening them out to suggest it going around the corner. And just normal flat shading up here. There, in the corner, and a little bit of pop up here, just where that ribbon comes underneath. And last but not least, another shading there. And there we go. We have a three by three grid. This is step one. Step two is your circles. Now with the circles, when you're doing them on your grid, for example, if you make them super big like that and your ribbons are going to be really skinny and conversely if you make them super small then your ribbons are going to be fat big and fat so I always tend to go for a nice sort of medium size but again play with it it's up to you so step two is the circles step three is your parallel pairs remember they change direction each time you go and they go on the inside of the circles on your diamonds yeah like that and then four is your corners and edge five background Six 
shading and then you're done so there we are a simple basic Celtic knot thanks for watching have a go if you do have a go post a picture below of that stay awesome stay creative love you lots bye